So you are a starting or beginner YouTuber, or maybe you just want some free tools for home videos. Well, this is the video for you. So I'm assuming this is going to be a pretty long video, but I'm going to split it into three parts, audio, video, and then tools for YouTubers. But I will also make timestamps in this video if you want to kind of skip around and stuff. So roll intro. This video has been a long time in the making. It's really a, a culmination of all the different tools and things that I've used over my six-ish months on YouTube. And if you're watching this video at all and you're like, oh, I know of another tool that he hasn't mentioned, drop it in the comments below. Let other people know that there are more sites because I 100% know I've missed stuff. Starting off with it, we're going to go with audio. Audio is great for your videos. It can add so much depth, especially if you're doing vlogs or cinematic pieces. I don't use a ton of audio in my normal videos like this. Maybe I should. Maybe that'd make it better. Um, but I have in some of my cinematic pieces, like my Mavic Mini footage video, and all the audio that I have used in my videos leading up to this point has come from the very first website that I'm going to be talking about, and that is the YouTube Audio Library. The YouTube Audio Library is really the go-to for anyone who f wants to find free music. It lets you search by genre, mood, instrument, duration, and it's great because 95% of the pieces don't require attribution. You can just use them in your videos. You don't got to do anything else. You don't got to worry about it. It's great. There's certainly a lot of pieces for you to choose from, and you're most likely going to find the song that matches the mood you're trying to go for in your video. It just might take a little bit of searching, but the whole underlying message of this video is these tools are free, so you are going to have to make some compromises when it comes to them, and most of those compromises are going to be convenience. The next website is called Purple Planet, and this one I only recently discovered, but it seems pretty good. It doesn't have a massive library but the quality of the content seems to be pretty good. They do require you to have an attribution in your YouTube description, but it is clearly spelled out in what you have to say to give them that attribution, and it's pretty simple. You don't have as much ability to search tracks. You can only really search by mood, but one thing I do like about Purple Planet is next to each song, it gives you the BPM of the song, so if you're trying to match a certain beats per minute or you have a certain tempo that you want to have that matches your video, it'll be easier to kind of go through and find a song that matches that tempo. Another one is Ben Sound, which is very similar to Purple Planet, not the most expansive library, and you do have to give attribution, but it's pretty good quality stuff. And every single thing I talk about in this video, the link to it will be in the description, so just, just, just so you guys know. The next one up is Mixkit, and this one I really, really like. Like, Mixkit is kind of becoming my favorite website for YouTubers ever, and you'll see why over the course of this video. Mixkit gives you a very expansive library. The interface is awesome, like the interface is so much better than any of the other audio websites, and you can search by mood as well as tags, which I haven't seen before, but this just makes finding the right piece even easier. The last one is the Free Music Archives, or the FMA, and this library is massive. Like, it is so, so big. The thing that kind of sucks about it is you can only search by genre, and with thousands and thousands and thousands of songs in each genre, you have a lot of stuff to go through. And so, this one I would kind of put on the bottom of the list. I would try some of the others first, because this one you're going to have to look for a while trying to find the perfect song. So I would go with some of the others before this one, and use this one as a last resort. Now on to sound effects. I gotta be real with you guys, um, I had a lot of trouble finding websites that gave you free sound effects. Which is kind of crazy considering, like, it's sound effects, you know? Like, the go-to is obviously just looking on YouTube for that sound effect you want, and then the YouTube videos will, like, give you a little download link. But as for, like, 
websites that give you all sound effects and you just kind of search it up and find it, there wasn't a whole lot. There is one that basically I strictly use, like I, I haven't used anything else except this one, and it's called Free Sound, and like the name suggests, it's Free Sound. The thing that's really nice about this is it's a community-based platform, so anyone can just upload sounds, which means that they have a massive library, but not everything will be the highest quality. The interface of Freesound does have a little bit to be desired, but it's sat, like it's a community-based platform. You're not paying for it. It's all free. It's just users uploading their sounds, so there's not a whole lot you can complain about. So for all of my sound effects, I have strictly used Freesound, and there's only been a few times that I haven't found the sound I've wanted, one of them being a nice cinematic whoosh. Still looking for the perfect cinematic whoosh. So if you have a perfect cinematic whoosh, comment down below on where I can get it, because I'm looking for it, and I can't find it yet. The next one up is Sound Effects Plus, and this one, the library isn't huge, but all the sound effects are really, really high quality. For some reason, they do limit you to 100 downloads a month, but also 100 downloads is a lot, so I don't know too many people who are going to be going over that limit, but just to let you know. The next one up is, of course, the YouTube audio library along with songs. I also have sound effects, but there are not a whole lot of sound effects, and I haven't found any of them to be entirely useful, but kind of like the free music archives, I would keep the YouTube audio sound effects as kind of a last resort and use free sound or sound effects plus first before you get into the YouTube audio sound effects because they're not they're not great. Besides just looking up YouTube videos and then just people giving a link to an individual sound, those were really the only places that I could find free sound effects, which just completely blows my mind. Like I don't understand how there aren't more just kind of community based stuff. And obviously there were a few more but they were all really nasty and kind of sketchy, and I didn't want to recommend them to you. Alright, so now we're into the video section. Starting with stock footage, of course. Like I told you, it's coming back. Mixkit. Mixkit is my new favorite website, not sponsored. Along with a great audio library, they also have a pretty good stock footage library that, again, needs no attribution, which I love it. Thank you, Mixkit. Thank you. I honestly wish I would have found Mixkit a little earlier because I could have really used their stock footage in some of my earlier videos. And sometimes, you know, you say there's quantity but not quality. Well, Mixkit is definitely quantity and quality. Like, their stock footage is really, really well done. So you're definitely going to find the shot you need to, you know, fill some B-roll if you don't have that one B-roll shot or something like that. The next one up is Pexels. You know, like, Pixels, but, um, very funny. But this one reminded me a lot of Mixkit. It has a pretty big library. It's all really high quality. You can search stuff fairly easily. I do love the options it gives you with videos and photos. So those are the two best stock footage websites that I could find. So between those two, I really don't think you're going to need any other websites. Like, I think those two websites should have you covered. So now we'll get into color grading. And this is only one website, but this website has been so useful for me. And this website is called Fresh Lutz. And, like the name suggests, it is a website entirely filled with LUTs. What's really nice is you can, you know, just search for LUTs by the general tint or style that you're going for, but you can also search for LUTs based on the log profile that you're using on your camera. So you can use, like, the Sony S-Log or the Canon D-Log. There's all these different gammas that you can choose from, and so you know that if you go to that log, if you shoot, you know, on a Sony camera and use an S-Log, you can find LUTs that are specifically designed to work with Sony's S-Log. But Fresh LUTs has been awesome. Definitely recommend if you need any LUTs, you know, spice up your video or make it a little more cinematic. The very last pillar of the free tools for YouTubers is just different tools that will help you grow your channel and kind of help you analyze the different analytics that you're going to be getting. You've probably heard of this one before because I think it's like, the main go-to one, and this one is called TubeBuddy. Uh, there is a pro version, I don't have the pro version, but the free version has been very, very helpful for me. 
And TubeBuddy is basically an extension that you download and that'll kind of apply itself over the YouTube studio and just give you some extra analytics. The thing I probably use TubeBuddy the most for is when I'm making tags for my videos to increase their SEO score because, you know, I want people to find my videos so I can get more views and make money and, you know, yada yada. TubeBuddy recommends different tags that I can use to help me up my SEO score, which is really, really nice because, you know, sometimes I might not know what quite to add and TubeBuddy will help me out with that. It also just gives you a basic SEO score uh, from what you've done, analyzing your description, your title, and then your tags. It'll kind of tell you what you need to improve on. Oh, like maybe change this word out. Oh, your title isn't a very high SEO score. It's not going to be found very easily. You might want to think about switching that, which I think is really, really nice. It definitely helps out a lot with like the SEO algorithm portion of YouTube. Another one is Snappa, and this doesn't really have anything to do with analytics. This is a great one for helping you kind of build your channel art. Uh, it gives you templates for different things like thumbnails. I don't need the thumbnail, but it's there if you have an option. It gives you a template to make the big banner at the top of your YouTube channel. And the thing that I have used it for is it gives you templates for different animated end screens, like this one here that I've used at the end of most of my videos. And you can buy the end screen, but you can download a free version that has a little watermark in the corner, but if you use, you know, a lighter end screen, the watermark will show up less. And I mean, people are looking at that for like three seconds. They're not really going to see the watermark. They have a ton of different templates that you can use to, you know, give people, you know, previous video and most recommended and, you know, just a little prompt to subscribe to your YouTube channel. And with an animated end screen, you kind of go from, you know, like, ooh, beginner YouTuber to like, bam, influencer. <sighs> all with an animated end screen. The next one up is called vidIQ, and this is just a website that gives you a ton of different analytics about your YouTube channel that you couldn't really find anywhere else. I don't really know how helpful this is, because I think this is like a deeper dive than most people want, but it is kind of cool to see. But I really do like the layout of the website, and there's this one graph that shows you your view breakdown between searches, subscribers, and then suggested. I think that's kind of interesting to see, you know, oh, like most of my videos come from searches and at least come from subscribers because, you know, I only have so many subscribers so not a whole lot of my views are coming from that area. Oof, that's it. Um, I hope that some of those tools were helpful and you hadn't heard before and you're able to make good use and really up your production quality. I wish you luck. And if there are any tools that I missed and you have found that have been really, really helpful for you, drop it, what it's called, in the comments and help me and everyone else who's going to be watching this video out. If you did enjoy the video, it would help me out a lot if you did subscribe, but I totally get if you don't want to subscribe, uh, maybe think about giving this video a like, would also mean a lot. This is John from 16 Views. See ya.